Hello, Debbie. Hi, Petra. How are you? I'm good. I can see that you're definitely in summer and I'm definitely I in winter. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Always when I speak to somebody in South Africa, I can see how cold it is there. Yeah, it's chilly today. It's really, it's, um, it's pouring with rain today and miserable. Really? Yeah. Well, that's Cape Town for you, winter rain. Yeah, absolutely. And four seasons in one day. Exactly, yeah. Debbie, um, how is the situation at the moment there for you? Oh, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> it is, things are a little tenuous at the moment um, because we are, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, our president, announced last night that we were going back into a level four lockdown, which um, is a little different from what it was previously, but not much. Uh, but it was it's was to be expected because um, the infection rate is is getting out of control mm -hmm. again in South Africa. And um, I think I think just globally, you know, there's a lot of COVID fatigue. People are are tired of paying attention to the rules. And everybody just wants to get their life back to normal. And our vaccine rollout is, is slower than what, you know, obviously everybody would have liked. And, um, you know, we, I think we are a little bit at the back of the queue as far as getting vaccine supply is concerned. So mm -hmm. things, are, things are tough at the moment in South Africa. And it's really difficult for the, um, for the hospitality industry because restaurants as of last night closed they can only do takeaways and um, that makes it just so hard you know it makes it so yeah. so hard for people um <clears throat> and cape town city ballet are basically off this week uh because we had um a, a very unfortunate circumstance of some covid infections um you know we had we had um, a wonderful 13 performance run in the Opera House at Artscape um, at the, uh, the earlier end of May and into early June. And mm -hmm. in the middle of that season, we were reduced from 250 seats in the auditorium to 100 in sort of in the last week. And yeah. then the company had two weeks off and and of course, a lot of the dancers travel because their families are in other parts of the country. And, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> um, it seems as if <clears throat> traveling is, uh, is tricky. Um, you know, and they all went from different airports and different airlines and different, they went from different cities. But um, they're, they're okay. But obviously the company had to be, um, you know, put, out, put into uh, some kind of quarantine. And it looks like it looks like we've mitigated, you know, the risks as much as possible. And there are only three of them, although not to say only, you know, but yeah. uh, at the moment, they, and that they they seem to be doing okay, but mm -hmm. um, it really compromises a performance mm -hmm. space. And um, how is the mood um, amongst the dancers? You know, I think that the mood is actually excellent considering the situation at the, you know they the dancers have right from the get-go have really really just knuckled down I think everybody was really shell-shocked this time a year ago we didn't we really didn't know what had hit us any of us so, you know it was yeah a, a completely you know impossible experience and mm -hmm. and then when we got back into the studios we were very very strict about our protocols and the dancers were even in visors as well as masks for a short period of time mm -hmm. and um so there's the natural anxiety uh you know and fear but you know, dancers i mean i think south africans in general mm -hmm. and performers in particular i can speak for dancers particularly yeah. um are a resilient bunch mm -hmm. and yeah. they just want, they just want to do their morning class and training every day they want to do their rehearsals they want to get on the stage they want to be generous with their public and do what mm -hmm. they've spent their whole life doing and I, I think that's the hardest thing for them and we spend quite a lot of time 
you know, just chatting and I'm, you know, I make a very particular effort every day to engage with the dancers and just to, to chat mm -hmm. and to see how they're doing and to keep their, try and keep their mental health in, in a good place. Uh, and we just have to ride it out. I mean, this is our, this is the generation's world war, I think, quite yeah. honestly. Yeah, and especially for dancers, because their bodies are uh, basically their instruments. So the body needs to um, be active and move and, and um, be busy the whole time. And I think they, uh, that's what I've, I've been speaking to a lot of dancers over the world as well. And I think it's the most frustrating thing for a dancer, well, for any artist really not to do uh, what they are trained to do, but I think for dancers, their bodies are, you know, have to slow down, and and I think they're not used to that. Yeah, it it's it's the challenge of keeping their form, their form yeah. and fitness in in a home environment space. Mm -hmm. So you know, today when the regulations were um, made clear the you know gyms and, and I, I would can only assume yoga studios etc <clears throat> are closed pilates studios i i don't I'm, I'm not assuming but that's what the regulations seem to suggest mm. and you know um and, and this is not to make it lesser than for another artist but a a violinist or a cellist or you know a musician can sit in their lounge at home and they can practice six hours a day you know, mm. so can a vocalist. Yes, everybody needs their special surroundings, but dancers have a, such a particular place yeah. and quality of um, space that they need to work in. You know, their sprung floor, their, their temperature control correct, their space to be able to do, you know, the big things and the small things. And, and you know, the, the floors are, are, the, are the most problematic things. And we found that when we came back from the first lockdown, um, the dancers, even though they'd only been doing bar and not, not jumping at all, uh, they'd still been working on a kitchen floor or a lounge floor, you know, a, 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 a wooden floor over concrete. And that in itself actually produced some niggly little injuries mm. because of the, you know, not working on a proper floor, even if they're not jumping. Yeah. <clears throat> No, I think, you know, this is uh, in, in, the, in the dance world, I think there are many things that, um, that it would become a problem, I think, uh, you know, in, also in, in, I've been asking also uh, dancers and choreographers if they think that the, because the, like you say, the, the shape and, and the form of the, of the dancer and you know, that they are not able to do the things that they would normally do when they come back. So that that will also take a time to, again, um, get in shape and build the muscles and to be able yeah, to do it, all these things. It's keeping, it's keeping the intrinsic absolute form, mm. you know, so, so, you know that, that body that you can see is firing on all cylinders, performance ready. Yeah, you know, and 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 when a body has you know hasn't been doing its its normal thing every day, you know those those little neuromuscular pathways that are constantly constantly stimulated all day every day as a dancer in a studio, and yeah. then you know they they get a little bit sleepy, and um, mm -hmm. it's not the dancer's fault. It's 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 nobody's fault. It's just that it it just the impact for dancers. Um, you know, with, with, without lessening any other situation out there for dancers is just so overwhelming sometimes. So all, you know, I'm really focusing on at this point is we will get through this. Um, we have to continue to love what we do, to practice mm. what we do as best we can, to get performances on the stage as often as possible, even if it is to 50 or 100 people, it's the yeah. performance that counts for the dancer, not how many people are in the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And um, and so far, so good. I mean, this year, we've actually managed 20 performances this year, whereas last year we did one. Really? So one. this is, yeah. So this is actually amazing that, that this was possible for you. 
I think that from a date point of view, we got lucky. So mm. in, in December last year, <coughs> excuse me, in December last year, we had four planned mm. and we got the first one up and we lost the other three because mm. the, 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 um, the second wave hit. And then, of course, we went on leave, came back. It's summertime. People are spending more time outdoors. There was a little bit of loosening of the restrictions. We had a date in February. We lost that date. And, but then we got a date in March. And, and we did four performances in March. And then, very fortunately, we got a wonderful invita invitation to go to Durban. So we went to Durban for three performances straight after that. And then last month was... Um, the 50th anniversary of the opening of Artscape. And we were able to mark that in a very, very special way. And we got 13 performances out of those um, three week period. The first two weeks we were allowed 250 people in the auditorium. And then in the last week, the president brought it down to 100. So we mm -hmm. sort of squeezed in there just by the skin of our teeth. And of course now there's nothing nothing permitted he reduced to 50 and now last night it was there will be no gatherings for the next two weeks so we wait until the 11th of july and then we regroup and see because we have um veronica papers carmen coming up in august mm -hmm. in theory which we've started yeah. to rehearse last week on monday for the third time we started the re rehearsal process again but um so we're just going to have to wait and see Mm. So tell me um, about your company. Uh, how many dancers do you have? So there are 30 dancers, mm. uh, male and female, and then quite a few um, ad hoc dancers that work with us um, on short contracts, three months, six months, um, and a, a portion of our dance complement are um, apprentices, so people that have graduated from tertiary institutions, for example, that are 2021, 20, that are, are making that transition from the student environment or semi-professional environment to a professional environment. So, you know, uh, at the moment we are 30, 32, sometimes 34, um, but something, you know, the, the size of what one requires as a company is, is an interesting question because for the traditional classics, an average size of a company should be 55 to 60. Mm. And so we, in order to do those full lengths, um, we have to get quite a few ad hoc dancers in and then there's the character artist, et cetera. But even, even for, um, you know, plotless works and works that don't require set, the, you know, the one act works, for example, um, Serenade, uh, Balanchine Serenade. I mean, that requires 26 dancers, six men and 20 women. And we made it by the skin of our teeth, you know, when we, yeah. when we did uh, this, this, these last performances. And, and you know, there's, there's, because the company is smaller than it was uh, last year or at the beginning of last year, there's more pressure. So the workload is, is spread um, Thinner, you know, through the dancers, and you know, it, it puts so many different things at risk. But it, it the whole, it, everybody around the world is navigating the same thing. This is not yeah. a Cape Town City Ballet story. This is a, a story for every single country in the world, every single orchestra, opera company, drama company. It's the same. We we yeah. all have the same challenges. Yeah. Um, and tell me, in, in, in your company, how many South Africans are there? Um, mostly. The, the company is, really? is sort of 90% South African. So we mm. have, we have a, a Namibian, one Namibian male. We have a British male. Mm. We have a Brazilian male, a Dutch female dancer, and landed today into yeah. level four lockdown is a French male. So we have five, five, internationals five internationals and all the rest are South African, mm. every, everybody. That's um, amazing. Mm. Which, is, which, is, which is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, but but yeah. the, the intercultural exchange, you know, South, mm. a lot of South African dancers are, are working internationally. Um, a lot of them are working in a musical theater environment or in ballet companies and contemporary companies around the world. And it's wonderful to have 
um, other cultural energy in the space. Um, yeah. And how, how dancers from Europe think that um, the French guy that arrived today was um, quite funny because he was, he was in a t-shirt and, mm -hmm. and um, you know, his flatmate that he's just joined said, you know, he thinks I'm crazy because I've got three jackets on and, oh. and he's walking around in a t-shirt because we, you know, the, the European yeah. winter and our winter are, are very, very different. Exactly. So, you know, those sort of cultural differences are always fun to compare. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just lovely. It really, really is. Yeah. And uh, how many ballet companies are there in South Africa? Two. Okay. Cape Town City Ballet and Joburg Ballet. Okay. And so, they both, they both, they're similar size too. Yeah. And um, uh, this is my, my question actually, because I know a lot of South African artists leave the country. Um, I mean, I speak to opera singers here in Europe and uh, you know they leave the country because there are not many opportunities but for dancers for ballet dancers and and children doing ballet do you think there are um, possibilities enough possibilities well I mean I can obviously only speak for myself um, yeah. I, I wish that Cape Town City Ballet had the capacity to mm. have a, a fun, the financial capacity to have a bigger company, firstly, mm. to give more people opportunities. But we do have a very, very strong focus on our apprenticeship, um, so, so pre-professional education program to give dancers the best possible opportunity of, em, of employment. But mm. um, one, of the, one of the things that I feel very strongly about in my directorship and my approach to my directorship is that I am determined to continuously provide opportunities for dancers, um, diversity of repertory, so that they get to do the, the beautiful classics that everybody loves, uh, yeah. and, and they've been training for their whole life, and then the neoclassical stuff, and then the contemporary classical stuff, and then a smattering of the more contemporary, contemporary mm. stuff, so that they have this very, very um, broad spectrum of a repertory, which of course, you know, your audience loves that because, yeah. you know, there, there are so many people that like myself would go to, you know, would go to dance three times a week mm. in a theater. It, and I always do when I'm, when I travel, it's every night I'm in a different theater seeing a different thing. So, yeah. and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not certainly, you know, not as you're not, not the only person that's like that. I mean, all my colleagues are, are like that. So, so the more there is for people to see, um, the, the, the more, you know, the, the better the audiences, we're going to build bigger audiences, better audiences, and also the dancers become more diverse and they become more able and they, you know, enjoy some things more than they enjoy other things. Some things bring um, an, a particular audience uh, demographic, like an age demographic, you know, your, it's not only, I mean, I'm being a bit specific yeah. here, you know, older, it's not only older people that prefer the traditional classics. Um, you know, yes, we've got to be bringing new things in for the younger people that they can relate to um, and that, that where the music appeals to them. But actually, I have found throughout um, the last, you know, almost three years of, of um, my work with Cape Town City Ballet is that there are young people and middle-aged people and older, older people, male and female, completely mixed demographic in both the modern and the classical programs. So, mm -hmm. You know, we, that's, that is one of my aims and, and my focus is diversity of audience, diversity of repertory, diversity of dancers. Mm. And because you have a very uh, a broad <clears throat> audience, really. I mean, South Africa has got all these uh, different uh, cultures and, uh, and, and is ballet sort of still also, uh, on, uh, say, in the, in the black communities, <coughs> Is it um, something that they are interested in or is it something where education is really needed? Absolutely. There's, there's, there's phenomenal interest. And I think, you know, every parent of young children wants, wants the child to have a musical education, um, you know, a, a literary education, a dance and movement education. So 
I mean, you know, just like certain people are attracted to sport, some children yeah. love to read books. Uh, you know, every little girl lands up doing ballet. And now it's lovely in South Africa, there's so many young boys doing ballet, which, oh, which really? is really nice. It's, it's not, you know, it's culturally, people are opening their minds um, yeah. much, much more. And, um, you know, wh what South Africa is lacking is sufficient representation at all levels of dance so you know quite i mean this is a bit of a sidebar but one of the things that has been a little frustrating for me in 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 my years of of you know being in the dance world is that on the south african dancers that really really achieve and achieve high levels particularly those of color get headhunted out of the country very very quickly so one is thrilled for them to have that opportunity to expand themselves and to get to travel the world and to dance different repertories. But we should be supplying or, or enabling that same thing in South Africa, which is why I'm diversifying our repertory so much. Um, so the representation of our population on the stage is not nearly good enough. Mm. And it's something that we, we all, as, as an industry, we, we're working hard to address. Mm. But again, you know, to train a musician, to train a singer, to train a dancer, it takes years and years and years. And so many things have to align for that young person to develop into the pre-professional and to choose it as a profession, to get the parent or parents to endorse it as a profession, because let's face it, right now, as a parent, the worldwide, anybody that's a professional performer hasn't mm. been on a stage or has hardly yeah. been on a stage, no matter which country you're in. Everybody mm. is hanging on by a thread. So, you know, I have to ask myself the same questions that I would ask of others. If, if I had young children now, would I be encouraging them to become professional ballet dancers or professional musicians? I'm not sure. As much yeah. as I love it and am passionate about it and would and would choose my life over and over again, I would maybe with some slightly better choices here and there, yeah. but I would I would never change my choice of profession, even now in this darkest time. I'm mm. I'm I'm always looking for the light and going, okay, well, next year we're going to be able to do this, and you know, next month we'll be able to do that. Mm. So you know, I can't be objective about dance because mm. it is the thing that makes me get out of bed in the morning. Um, yeah. You know, and, and even, and I think what's also quite interesting there is that, um, is that yet it doesn't, it, it, that's not, I, I know who I am outside of dance, mm. but it's how do I choose to spend my hours of the day that I have free well, I'll watch a DVD or I'll mm. listen to a piece of music or I'll watch, you know, I'll watch one of our rehearsal, you know, uh, videos or, or something or yeah. engage with somebody that is in the profession um, with me, you know, on whatever subject. So, yeah, it's um, but it's but it's tough at the moment. Yeah. It's a tough, tough road for us. But this is, uh, I got goosebumps when you said that so many uh, of the dancers leave the country and, and uh, you know, that, that you feel that there should be more done for them there. And, um, and, and I wonder also, because I, I think a lot of people in South Africa have this idea, or because the arts, because there are not so many opportunities, so they would think, well, it's better to go and, and get a degree rather than to spend all these hours trying to become a dancer because where will you go or, or you know is there a is there a future for you <coughs> and um and I'm, I'm wondering about that uh, is, is there enough funding is there enough uh, for cape town city ballet for example uh, that people understand how important this is and how important part of of also the culture in South Africa that the ballet is? Well, you know, you know, the, the, the subject of arts and funding is, mm -hmm. you know, probably 500 years old. Uh, you know, I, th I, I think there'll never be a time when it's not discussed. Mm -hmm. um, but 
<clears throat> I feel quite strongly about the fact that, um, how can I put this? The, 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 the thing that, that is so important to me and as the leader of Cape Town City Ballet is for us to be able to generate a large amount of our own income through our box office, through really good, excellent performances that people want to pay money to come and see. This mm. is what we see in Europe all the time, you know, is full houses, tickets are expensive, high quality of work. We can do this in South Africa. We did it before, but yes, it was underpinned by a significant amount of state funding that sort of was the bedrock of what a company was built on. And the, from then you, you know, you moved forward and you made further money and you looked for philanthropic funding and corporate funding, et cetera. But you know, the, this current world situation has completely disenabled us to even earn a box office income. Mm -hmm. So we are just, you know, going at it hammer and tongs. You know, obviously, you know, I've become, you know, a fundraiser and a this and a that. I mean, if everybody in the industry has picked up extra, extra jobs, you know, um, and driving it, uh, you know, harder than harder than ever. But yes, we have to become more culturally aware, but it's not something that you can force. And remember that culture is a massive subject. Culture is food. Culture is sport. Culture is you know the, the nature that you know the 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 floral kingdom in south africa as opposed to the floral kingdom in england it's it's all part of everybody's culture and there's so many choices today with yeah. how people can spend their disposable income and <clears throat> what goes on a stage has to be has to speak to your public it has to be attainable and you know if a young a black child is sitting in an auditorium watching a stage that is filled with people that are only of a white skin, then mm. there isn't a connection really, or it's not, a, not very easily going to happen if the representation isn't there. So the diversity, inclusivity and representation is what is so important. And I use as, a, as an example, and I've spoken about it quite a bit, is that we were very, very fortunate in August of 2019, Denise Schultz, who is a doyen of classical ballet in South Africa, spent many, many years abroad as well in America particularly. And she staged a new traditional sleeping beauty for us. Mm. And on opening night, I had invited a South African male dancer um, uh, back uh, uh, to Cape Town to perform from Washington Ballet. His name is Andile Ndlovu and invited him to come and perform on the opening night as the prince. And I invited uh, Precious Adams, who's uh, also an American, um, but from English National Ballet, a beautiful black female dancer. They, and they were the, the opening night couple um, mm -hmm. in, in August of 2019 in Sleeping Beauty. And the demographic of my audience changed in those performances literally overnight. Really? Black families with small children. It was just too wonderful to see. And it was just, it, it was, it was a goosebumps kind of experience because there was this, you know, the, the, the famous sort of musical entrance of um, Aurora when she comes in and this magnificent, precious runs, you know, down the ramp and onto the stage. And I mean, I think everybody's hair, you know, on the back of their neck was standing up because it was just like, yes, this is how it's meant to be. Mm. Glo globally, globally, this is what the world looks like. You know, it, it should be open and available to everybody. And that is something that we are driving very hard. It doesn't mm. change the fact, though, that a high performance athlete requires years and years and years of intense training and yeah. care and love and attention to detail and looking after psychological health. And, and then they may just decide when they're 18 that they want to be a doctor. Yeah. And then you've got to be okay with that. And I'm completely okay with that. And, you know, because what you, what you learn from, from arts and dance is, never going to leave you in your life exactly. I mean the life skills that it gives you so yeah. I, you know it's, imp it's important it, it's mm. important on so many levels 
but it's it's a long journey um petra it really is a long journey but i'm we're walking the road as a, as a company we we're walking the road and then of course there's also the thing of um how small that performance window is i mean if mm. you, if you think of, a, of an international um gymnast probably gets one maybe two olympics to be able to compete in and they yeah. work then I like for that and they may only get one shot at it mm. um you know so yeah it's such an elusive thing yeah but it it just shows you how the passionate these dancers are that they that they do that you know and i must yes. say um it's uh you're talking about <laughs> this audience and all the young children in there i also i i i believe strongly that uh young children get inspired uh, if they get exposed uh, to art and uh, if I just think my daughter um, if uh, we went to see a performance of the Nutcracker of the Cape Town City Ballet uh, many years ago and it was her first ballet performance that she saw and on the way back she said she wanted to be a dancer and she is a dancer today so it was because of that 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 happened, you know, and it, it was one performance that I took her to. She was four years old and I would never have expected her to to, you know, be so inspired by that. And it's mm. like you say, you know, it's it's thinking of the audience also that you are doing. I think you're doing a fantastic work there to to think that way, you know. Yes, absolutely. I mean, going back to your daughter, I mean, that lighting that spark. Um, exactly. mm. And, and you know, who, who knows how it happens and how those little imaginations work. And it, 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 it just probably takes a moment, you know, something they see something on a stage that just lights up their imagination. And then that's it. Um, mm. And actually, I mean, I mean, for myself, I can't even remember a time when I didn't want to dance. Mm. Um, my my old my, uh, much older sister uh, was a ballet teacher, and she, you know, in the old days when everybody had their studio in the triple garage at the back of the house, you know, the, those days, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and you know, so it was out of the pool, back from school, whatever, and into the studio, and just sitting there, you know, watching, you know, one class after the next, after the next, and doing my own classes, and it it it's never entered my head. I don't mm. remember a time in my life where it wasn't a part of my life. Yeah. And um, it, it, it continues to, to mm. spark my imagination. And I want, I want this generation that are, that are, you know, coming of age now and the, the dancers that are professional, um, you know, experiencing their professional life now, which they probably, you know, if they're lucky, they get till, to probably 40. Some of them mm. for, further, some of them not so much. It just depends on the luck of the draw really um and i'm so determined for them to experience uh you know what other dancers around the world are experiencing and what they get and the choreographers that they are that they are exposed to it shouldn't just be you know you don't only want to eat um you know meat and potatoes and carrots uh, yeah. every single day you you know you you want to to be diverse in 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 what you you eat as part of your your diet so yeah. you know they they need to be doing balanchine and you know there's just endless opportunities for dancers to grow as artists through the people they're fed by yeah no that's true and um i have i'm very um passionate about the fact that children should um be educated in art in even if they're not becoming artists so that they have at least um that experience and the the <coughs> you know, this this the exposure to art um and i i talk to a lot of musicians as well and i think it's it's the artists um almost it, it has to come from them to to inspire young children and to reach out to young children as well to uh yeah. to to develop this and and like you said to, to just um have that spark um created 
so that they could uh, decide, you know? Um, and, I, and I so wish that all schools could have art as a subject because I think of, if I think of countries like South Africa where there are many um, families where it's just not possible to pay for ballet lessons. And it's not just, it's not possible to pay for music lessons, but if it's available in schools and everybody can have just a small part of it, uh, wouldn't it be so wonderful? Absolutely. And, and that would light the spark, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, music at school, drama lessons at school, uh, movement or dance lessons at school. I mean, it, you know, some years ago, it, it used to be the case. It, it, it no longer is. But also there is this, um, you know, sort of discounting of, of cultural, you know, soft skills, as, as they refer. Yeah. You, know, mm. you, you can imagine how well a dancer would take to that expression that they what yeah. they do is a soft skill yeah. um yeah nev nevertheless but you know it's it's up to us to educate we have mm. to provide the role models we have to um we have to inspire the role models to inspire the younger up-and-coming generations exactly. yeah that that's what we you know that there, there needs to be a live a, a sense of responsibility from your 25, 30 year old dancers to be looking downwards to the little people that are there and looking up at them that are watching them all the time and how much of a responsibility they carry by just mm. being in the space with them. Mm. Uh, you know, we, I mean, we have a big education program on a Saturday, which of course, as of last night, has to be on pause for a couple of weeks. But, um, you know, we have little people right from the age of seven, eight, coming in Wonderful. and the company is working in the one studio and and the the um education programs are, are working in the in the other studio and and the children are always craning their necks to see you know who who's dancing and you know and they point you know they point at the at the it's just lovely and they have a whole yeah. discussion and you you can see that they're completely engaged you know yeah. they've done their class they're having their little snack and and they're busy you know pointing out the dancers and the ones they like and who's their favorite and it's just it, that all that stuff is so important but tell me about this this educational program that you're doing <clears throat> so um we have a long time uh, 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 in in cape Lancy valley for a long time there's been the male development program for both sort of males under 12 and males sort of 12 to 17. Um, and then what I have focused on quite a lot is to build relationships with education initi initiatives that are already pre-existing in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a lovely school called the Zama Dance School, which is in Guguletu under the directorship of my dear friend, Andrew Worth. Um, we have um, Tabisa Segela, who has a ballet school, um, or a dance school, should I say, in, um, in Athlone, Athlone and in uh, Guguletu, a Guguletu Dance and Leadership Program um, under Uwetu Kutasi, all um, young um, women, or, or that, no, Andrew and two young women, that, that are making their own way and deciding that they want their own school. So it's a, pr a private initiative so, and it is underpinned by Cape Town City Ballet where they came to us, they want their children to experience ballet. They are contemporary teachers or they teach African contemporary um, and they want their children to have a, a broad experience of dance. Mm -hmm. So they come to us on a Saturday um, and there's basically classes through throughout the day and then we also support things like um young choreographers we we have a very very big studio space which almost forms like a black box kind of theater you know like a, a festival style theater um and we yeah we so we provide performance space we provide rehearsal space for for young uh, dance programs or for dance programs that don't have a home so it's really about i'm um, always try, trying to put out there, what do you need from Cape Town City Valley? What would you like to have from us? Obviously, these programs attend our performances. We do Q&A things with them. Um, and, and just 
really keep their interest alive. Yeah. You know, and and, and that they'll, you know, that we'll take it in a rotation where the the young dancers are able to go backstage and to to meet the professional dancers backstage and to see what a stage looks like, you know, from the other side. And um, and then also we have we take the opportunities with um, some of our you know like Nutcracker for example provides you with opportunities for child characters. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. You know we've got a Charles Dickens production of Veronica Papers, A Christmas Carol, that mm -hmm. provides for child characters. So we'll then audition. Uh, we'll put out a general audition call in Cape Town and, and then young dance students from all over will audition and then we'll give as many people opportunities as we can. So three or four or five casts of Children for Nutcracker and then they, you know, they get to, yeah. they get to see lots and they get to, you know, they get to know the music and they get to know the story and they get to interact with the dancers. And as you were saying, this is what provides the inspiration exactly. and, yeah. um, and keeps them going. And, and also it, it alleviates the teachers to a degree because the teachers are always this one man band, you know, mm. trying to provide the inspiration to be the mother, to be the psychologist, to be the teacher, to be the nag, you know, all of the things that a dance teacher needs to do to get this, you know, young rose bush to grow into a big rose bush that, you know, that is bearing fruit. And yeah. that's a lot of responsibility. So, I mean, you know, traditionally in South Africa, it's, it's dance schools are usually a one man or two man band, you know, two woman band, two man band. And so the load that the teachers take on is just massive. Mm. And having been there myself for so long, I, I want to try to underpin those teachers' efforts by saying, right, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to give you or what I can help you with. You tell me what you would like help mm. with. And, you know, just for them to come and sit in on one of our rehearsals with 10 of their students and not have to think about anything other than enjoying what's in front of them and let the children absorb and learn from somebody else and ask the questions. It underpins the work of the teacher and the, you know, the, and the work that that teacher is already doing because it's a, it's a highly, um, teaching dance is, is not something that most people understand what goes into that, what that teacher has done to bring that student to that point. Mm. You know, and the hours of work at home, et cetera, et cetera. And it's exactly like you say, when they then, when the children then come out and can see, can get a glimpse of what it is like in the professional world and what it is like to, to be a dancer, then it is a, it's a, a motivation for them, you know? They can see, they can see the yeah. end result, yeah. they can see where it's going to. But if it's just, if it stays at the, like you say, at the ballet, the, the ballet classes, then there's, there's no incentive really for them to, to not to carry on, but it's, I, I can understand that if it's just that, then, you know, they don't see what it could be. Well, there, there has to be, there has to be a, a goal that is, that is visible. So, yeah. you know, a young, a young aspirant professional tennis player can mm. watch, you know, endless amounts of professional tennis on, mm. on television. Um, a, a, a young person that wants to be a TV journalist, you know, can watch the news every hour, in fact, 24 hours a day, just about on television. You know, I want to be a news anchor or I want to be an actress, but yeah. there, or for dance, this is less so. Yeah. And, and so the, the more we can provide, um, the, the better. Mm. Um. Debbie, but tell me on a lighter note, what, what are you doing now in the lockdown? Uh, do you have a, something else except uh, you say you, you're so uh, focused on your dancing, but do you have a hobby or do you cook or bake or? Oh, my, no, my husband is the cook. Oh, my husband is the cook. I, I'm, yeah, my husband is the cook. But I'm, I must say, um, 
actually we've we've been doing some ho house alterations in our house mm. in the last couple of months so we just coming to the end of that but um i love to read i mm. really love to read i love i love just being in my own home i like to crochet i like oh, to okay. tapestry um wow. my english bulldog keeps me busy and mm. keeps me um level with the world brings okay. me down to, to ground level and um yeah so you know it, it it's a case of um yeah i mean i i love i love my life and what i've chosen for my life and mm. um, i i don't have any I, I suppose my i love information i love reading mm. Mm. I, I love keeping myself abreast on on you know what is going on in the rest of the world in dance mm. and culture and opera and music and and keeping in touch with colleagues and being you know mm -hmm. part of a, a support system um that, that has been amazing actually for me during lockdown mm -hmm. is that there is a a group of um uh, directors that i'm very fortunate to be a part of that has just been a, like a lifeblood for mm -hmm. all of us because and, and everybody just you know tells it like it is you know mm -hmm. having a bad week this week because of x y and z and but, yeah, but I think this is the the one thing of lockdown that that everybody says is that connection that that we had with other people because there was time they you know yeah. to to do that. And by the way, I love cro crocheting crocheting as well. I'm not very <laughs> good. I'm not very oh, good. Not, but but <laughs> I go. But it's it's very therapeutic for me. I do yeah. it in the winter. Yeah, I love yeah. to do. It. Yeah, uh, I, I really, I really enjoy enjoy it. And I made one blanket in the lot in the first lockdown. Now I'm sort of a third of my way through through the second one. But and I think there'll be a lot of it happening in the next couple of days because it's raining yeah. the whole, whole week, the whole oh, week. Oh, my oh, you've got now a two week a two week lockdown, or? Well, yeah. So the lockdown is two weeks, but in in theory, Cape Town City Ballet is permitted to be at work as long as we are, are, are observing all the oh, correct okay. distance protocols, okay. et cetera. Mm -hmm. But because of our positive cases, mm -hmm. we are obviously, um, you know, being very cautious and uh, dancers are quarantining. And, uh, you know, I, with, with me being ill, I, had, I wasn't in the space when the compromise oh. happened. Yeah. You know, last week. So, but in any case, so we just, mm -hmm. we navigating through that and mm. with any luck, we'll be back at the bar on Monday. Um, mm. And um, I, with my fingers crossed, I'm hoping because none of us want to be on Zoom anymore. We are Zoomed yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as far as class is concerned. Yeah, very specifically yeah. No, I, I heard that from the other dancers as well, that they say this Zoom, the Zoom classes that don't work. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. But uh, Debbie, one more question. What is your wish for when this is all over? Oh, um, well, I think that um, that this time has been certainly a time of great reflection for me. Mm -hmm. And I think a time of great ref reflection for, for others globally. And I suppose I would just like to, to live in a more compassionate, empathetic, caring world where the important, the truly important things mm -hmm. regain their importance in everybody's minds and, and, and hearts and that the world can be a less violent um, one that you know where people i think tolerance is the thing that i'd i'd like to to see really emerge from this is that you know no one human being is the same as the next we all have a different dna profile and tolerance and respect is just i think really really something that i would wish for the whole world and I will be a little bit selfish and say, I really am dying to travel a little bit um, mm. and just 
you know, go and visit my friends and my colleagues in other parts of the world and let people come to our beautiful country of South Africa to see what we have to offer and allow that sort of cultural exchange and, and stuff to happen. And, you know, people just enjoy the world for the beauty that it holds. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's true. And, and I think also, you know, in South Africa, there's so much to see um, and to do. And, and I think you um, I spoke to David Peden, who's a guest teaching there. Yes. And he told me about this ballet that uh, you did, is it in Goma? In Goma, yes. In Goma, yeah. Yeah. in Goma, yes. Yeah, and I think something like that, isn't it amazing? Because it's so, if, if, you, if you could see something that, like that in South Africa, um, yeah. at, at a theater there that is so, so, uh, so special. It would be so special if you visit South Africa. It was, so, it was a very, very special moment in time. It really was. And hope that it was the first of many, many performances to come of the ballet. Um, Debbie, thank you so much for your time. Um, I would so, so love to uh, really put some light on on the work that you are doing because I think it's incredible and uh, way, how you speak and with your enthusiasm and passion it's wonderful I think it's great for Cape Town City Ballet as well um, so uh, in future please if it's possible and you do uh, I would I would so love to talk about when you do um, productions that I put uh, that we do a short maybe a 10 minute zoom interview and we can i can put it on the artist voice and just to highlight what you are doing because i think this would be so amazing to see um you know for 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 everybody in europe and and america and all over the world to see what you are doing there fantastic i i would i would love that and um with any luck we'll get carmen on the stage uh in the next six weeks to two months i have okay. a feeling it might be delayed a little but I'm hoping you know I'm gonna get it up this year no matter what um, mm. and I'll certainly keep you posted it's amazing to be yes, in contact please. with you yeah. and thank you for your interest and it's been lovely lovely chatting to you no thank you so much yeah and um, and uh, happy um, crocheting this week and and, <laughs> <laughs> and I hope to uh, and your husband can cook and I hope you're in the studio on Monday. Oh, I hope so too. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Petra. Thanks whenever so much. You, whenever you visit Vienna, please let me know. Oh my gosh. It's such a long time since I've been to Vienna and all I can yeah. remember is coffee shops and the chocolate. Oh, we, okay. <laughs> in 1994, I performed in v all over Austria, but in Vienna and with... Really? Um, Yes, with Danza Lorca Spanish Dance Theatre, and I loved it. I absolutely oh, wow. loved it. So well, I will certainly take you up on that. Yeah. But I will. I come to South Africa um, now and again. So, um, but I would love to come and see a performance as well at the Cape Town. Fantastic! Dance I would yeah. love to have you there. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, we will we'll stay in touch. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.